bootstrapped a brand new Photoshop plugin called Auto Thresh that is, in my opinion, one of the best tools for merch designers or any designer that wants to get that vintage print look. And if you're a fan of grain and threshold, this is definitely going to be up your alley. This is actually the cover art for Auto Thresh, and I have one other design that we're going to test. This tool or plugin is so powerful, guys. It actually takes your artwork and the tonal ranges and it separates them onto layers and it gives you full control over grain and threshold so you can really you know craft the look that you're going for so to kind of demonstrate how this works even more let's go up to select color range and if you go to the sample colors which is under the select menu you'll see that there's highlights midtones and shadows so let's click on highlights and you're going to see highlights show up on the canvas here you want to obviously make sure that invert is not checked and then if we go midtones, you'll see the midtones, and then we have the the shadows. But uh, Auto Thresh actually creates a second highlight, so you have even more control over the highlights. Maybe you want to add more detail in certain areas, or maybe you want to add, introduce like another highlight color. You could do that. So it's really cool. Let's cancel that. We'll start from the top to the bottom. Okay. Step number one is you want to make sure you're choosing the right fabric color because obviously this background is not light, right? It's it's a darker background. So it works within the light and dark ranges. So if you have a white t-shirt that you're trying to print on, you wanna make sure white or light is selected. And if you have a dark color shirt, let's say black, you wanna make sure dark is selected. And honestly, you always wanna start off with white or black backgrounds first, even if you're printing on, let's say gray or red, if it falls within the light fabric color, just choose light. And if it falls within the dark, just choose dark. And it does make a difference. So make sure you you know choose correctly. And let's just apply this as is, and we can make adjustments as needed. Just like that, it's already done. Now let's say we do not like the, for whatever reason, we don't like the highlight color. We can change this to whatever we want. Let's just go white. And what's going to happen is it's going to recreate all those layers and update your color automatically for you. And there you go, it's simple. Now, the threshold sliders are going to work different than a typical level slider. So if I press Command L on my keyboard, you're going to see that we have darks, or shadows, midtones, and highlights. So starting from the left shadows, in the middle, 50% gray, we have the midtones, and then on the far right, we have 100% white. The sliders are not going to be like a direct representation of this, and this is something that we're still working on. The cool thing about this plugin is it utilizes a license key system. So anytime I update it, you guys get the update automatically completely free. So once you get that update, you basically just download the plugin again and you'll have the latest version. And again, it's all free. I'm not charging for updates. So uh, that's kind of cool. Let's cancel this. So let's say we want more of the yellow in there. We can actually take the highlights over to the left a little bit. The way it works is if you take the highlight threshold to the right, you're introducing those highlights more into the highlights, right? if that makes sense, like you're in that range. If you take the highlight threshold to the left, you're introducing it to the midtone range like this. So if I go too far to the left, you're gonna see that we're gonna be way too much into the midtone range, and it's probably gonna get rid of that red, which is what it did. So if we bring it back to the right, you're going to see that it will introduce that highlight threshold into the highlights, the proper area that it needs to be. So you just gotta, like I said, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna introduce, let's say, a highlight into a mid-tone range because you're just going to like, you know, throw the design off balance, if you will. And that's pretty much it. Now, that's how you craft a look. And again, you can change the color of each, you know, tonal range or layer, if you wanna call it that. And these are all separated already for you. You just can't see it yet. So that's the threshold sliders. Now let's go up to the top. You're gonna see pattern. You can actually change the pattern. If you don't like grain, or maybe you want the grain to be bigger or smaller, you can actually raise the pattern size and it's going to raise it in the back end. So what it's doing is it's recreating all the threshold layers for you so you don't have to do it manually. Normally this would take a lot longer, but thanks to Auto Thresh plugin, it does it literally in seconds. And um, as you can see, we have a much larger pattern now. Now let's say we don't like grain one, let's try grain two. And grain two is gonna give you a little bit more of the grain. It's gonna bring out some details in the shadows and you know introduce a little bit of a, if you will, a different look. So let's zoom out. So grain two is a little bit different looking, but it's a lot larger. So you wanna actually lower the pattern size. Some patterns look better smaller, some look better larger. So you just kinda of have to find like what looks best to you. Um, let's see, there you go, that looks better. So let's try emulsion. This is actually one of my favorite. And um, one of the ones that I think I use the most, it's basically a reticulation, but done in my own way. 
And uh, all of these patterns are handcrafted by, by yours truly, by the way. So that looks cool. See, reticulation, in my opinion, just looks so much better. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and try half tone for fun. We'll try one more pattern. And the pattern's gonna come on a little large at first, but it's okay. We can lower the size to maybe 48 and see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks much better already. So now we have that halftone pattern. For me, it's grain two and emulsion one. Uh, they're, they're the best. As it stands, you can print this, but the problem is the layers in the back end are stacking on top of one another and it's creating a thick print. And let me demo how that looks. If we go into the smart object, you're going to see all of the layers, but the problem is they're all going to be stacked. So let's actually create a solid color real quick. There we go. And let me show you what it's looking like. So if you look at the shadows, nothing's being cut out from the shadow, right? So if you were to print this right now, you're going to be stacking layers on top of one another, and that's going to create a very thick print. And it's unless you're going for that, it's not pleasant to wear on your, you know, on your body. It's you're going to feel it. It's going to be thick. So in order to kind of combat that or fix that, we created something called Knockout. So let's go ahead and click Knockout. What Knockout does is it actually takes all the layers and it cuts them out from one another, so you're not layer stacking. And this is great for screen printing. So you're saving ink, and you're not, you know, yeah, you're saving ink. You're not wasting you know, unnecessary ink and you're gonna have a much nicer print. I already applied knockout, you can't see anything, but let's enter the layer mask, I'll just click on it, and you'll see that each layer is going to have a layer mask minus the highlight two, of course, and if we toggle highlight two off, let's create a background color actually. All right, so I just created a background layer so we can actually see what we're doing, but let's toggle highlight two off, and you're going to see that it's cut out from highlight one. Let's do the same thing with highlight one. It's cut out from midtones, and then midtones is cut out from shadows. So your stacking is going to be much cleaner. You're not gonna have that thick print. Let's say you want to create spot colors for screen printing. All you have to do is click make spot colors. It's automatically going to add a white underbase that's already choked by one pixel. And what that's going to do is when you go to screen print, let's say, you're not gonna get that white bleed from the white underbase. So let's go ahead and go to channels and I'll show you what this looks like on the channel. So we could toggle off all of the RGB channels. There we go. And let's, you know, turn one by one on. There you go, guys. You have perfect spot colors with the choked white underbase. As you can see, there's no bleed whatsoever. If I toggle it on and off, you can see there's no difference. If it had bleed, you would see the white pixels peeking out and it doesn't have that. And the cool thing is if you're a screen printing shop, you can just left click on each layer and change the solidity and the color itself. If you have a specific color that you want to print with, uh, you know, whatever Pantone color you want to print with or whatever have you. This is basically a simulated spot color process is what it really is. So there's a hidden secret within the plugin. Let's say you want to save your layers as PNGs. You could do that. So if we go to this little menu, there's an export button. Let's go ahead and try that and it's going to automatically save it to your desktop. So now on the desktop, I have all of my PNGs stacked exactly how they are in the layers. So powerful, guys. And we even have that white underbase. And last but not least, let's say you do not like what you see and you just wanna start from scratch again. You just click reset and it resets your artwork back to the original state. Be careful clicking that though, because if you like what you've done, it's going to erase everything. You can always press Command Z and get it back though. But that is Auto Thresh in a nutshell, and it works for light backgrounds too. I'll quickly show you. So let's click light, it's already on there by default. Let's apply it, and it's automatically gonna do it. And it already knows that it's a light background, so it's not going to create that white underbase for spot colors because you do not need it. And you can even toggle off that second highlight, honestly. You probably don't need it. Let's do that real quick. There you go, guys. Awesome. Auto Thresh plugin available now at charliepangus.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.